welcome to Marin Poets Live. I'm Neshama Franklin. I work at the Fairfax Library and I love poetry. After this program airs on TV, it will appear on the Marin Free Library website as part of a digital archive which also features biographies of the poets and links to our collection. For this month's program, we will feature Les Bernstein. Welcome, Les. Here we are. <laughs> Thank you for having me. What a pleasure it will be, especially when I hear your first poem, whatever it is. Well, I thought I'd start with a poem I wrote for my mother. Uh -huh. It's called Unvarnished. My mother said, when the morning sky is pink, the circus will come to town. My mother never explained moon-splatted stories laid out frame by frame, edges smooth and tucked away. My mother never believed the hazy terrain of theories, diagnoses, predictions. My mother trusted life's murky plot held in service of an unvarnished reality. My mother expected night to fall hard and the circus to move on. Oh, that's wonderful. What an interesting muse she is for you then. She really is. Yes, and how much you could appreciate her. So that leads to the second poem, which is called At the Edge. And I've often wished that I could talk with my parents who've passed. And sometimes they come in dreams. Yes. I believe, by the way, that you are talking to them. Yeah. I believe. So this one's called At the Edge. At the edge of awareness, the dead gather, speak in extinct tongues, enter dreams to tell and tell. They seep unrecognized in the light and in the dark, lacking sufficient ballast to remain in the knowable. In this one for certain life, the living gather and mourn, they hover and flit, cover the mirrors, rend their clothes. In the surly bonds of earth, it's a love story with a swamp of confusion and a lot of ache, while at the edge of awareness, accommodating angels, play with contradictions, and speak in clouds. Oh, I like that very, very much. And I love the little internal rhymes. <laughs> that, that, uh, that I'm, makes... glad, I'm glad you caught that. <laughs> oh, you could not not catch it. And I love the idea of ballast. And I can see you in the balloon, tossing it over and rising with them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have another. OK, this one's called Every Day. Every day in the middle distance, I build my house, the foundation yoked to plausibility, a dreamscape yard. Underneath a waking life, a charmed unconcern makes sacred altars for ordinary life, rooms built for forgetting. Every day I build a structure from the roof down, beams high, a hint of dry rot, Every day I build strange mysteries of small benedictions, a story carved in bone, no matter how unique, not exactly new. I, by the way, I, I love everyday life. I mean, I think it's where we get our nourishment. And I love the idea that, you, um, that your practice is recognizing how tenuous our link is to everyday life and how you have to ground yourself or, but you crown from the top down. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard that one before. <laughs> Hard to do. <laughs> right. What comes next? Well, this one's a title poem from my uh, second uh, chapbook, and it's called Naked Little Creatures. And it kind of speaks to how we come into the world and what's expected of us. So, Naked Little Creatures. Exiled into the world, self-replicating versions of the miraculous hover and buzz bracketed by stars so far apart, parables of daily life flutter and fuss. Busy, beeping lives come and go. Uncertainty is punctuated with an exclamation point. Gravity will never change its mind. Intoxicated by its own mystery, implausible happiness attracts a crowd. Mm. Mm. Um, you um, ha have a bunch of children, perhaps? I have a bunch of children. Yes, and so you have <laughs> experienced that. Yeah, um, I yes. 
I have. Right. And of course, birth is all about gravity initially, mm -hmm. and then about letting go. What a paradox. I know. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Um, you know, I'm fascinated with dreaming. And um, I noticed when looking through my poems to see what I would bring today, that so many of my poems reference dreaming. So this one's called Loose Magic. Mm -hmm. Arriving in the middle where all plots suspend, the caravan of loose magic rolls into town. Bumping along an almost familiar road, scenarios swerve and sway. History, no longer consigned to make sense, jars and slips from under the skin. Strange landscapes offered by the brain, mind the subconscious, speak images in many registers, give wonder and irony the heave. Because it's a dream, the dead live again, linger in the permeable, reveal the shape of wind. Navigated by the dreamer, the curve of time does not exist, nor the buzz of endeavor with its industry and sweep. Somewhere, a clock alarms, a surfeit of life will stir and forget, while the caravan of loose magic heads off to its next destination. Yes, well, I, I especially love that because of the link with Unvarnished, because that's your cir the circus she gave you. And again, the jettisoning of plot, the plot that binds us, that we assume we know where it's going and it's going to tie up into something neat, and life ain't neat. Or if it even is a plot, maybe it's just moment, 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 yes. and the way we tell it it's just a construct. Exactly. I believe that. Well, we could have a very long conversation. Yeah. Well, let's just let, <laughs> let the poems do most of the talking. Okay. So this is kind of going from, you know, the totally sublime to the ridiculous, but I've been so upset about this election season. Oh, yeah. So I've brought you a few of my rants. Good. This one's called Intent on Restoring Disorder. History lumbers on unstoppable, insinuating, while birds and everyone else sing the same phrases over and over. Fleeing angels correct their course, seeking a fresh exit strategy, as the dung beetle orients itself by the light of the Milky Way, its life is flat as a comic strip. The clouds whisper to each other, left only to bear witness. They sigh the name of the space in between. Although details are in dispute, time goes by in an amnesic drift. The past, with exultation and ache, anticipates the future's return. Wow, exultation and ache. What a construct. <laughs> okay. This is called the Today Show. <laughs> I told you it's a rant. A congenial group of skilled practitioners come to Congress. Governing with glory, false starts, hectoring, quarrels, and vexations, they scythe their way. The judgments come quickly, the solution easy. Others suffering will require forgetting. Now, scythe is in. <coughs> wow. I, ca I can't even watch. No, uh, I but, can't. Uh, but I'm glad that you are uh, getting honey from, uh, <laughs> you know. All our old failures, which oh, the God. failures uh, up, there, up there. And this is kind of uh, listening to polls, reading papers, etc. Yeah. It's called the trickster side of language. Ooh. Ambient unease, a knotty matter, a sharpened pinch unfolds between. Conversations, mill and low, cannot reconcile fiction and truth. Emptied out days, flee the center. One final look back, see what you want. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> let's keep going on this okay. journey. Oh, well, let's just go to something more cheerful. Um, this one's called I've Been Thinking. <laughs> I've been thinking about death lately, how the days fall over and time seems more wide than long. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking about the grasp of darkness, how we don't always grow toward the light and how the soul does not show in x-rays. I've been thinking about the past, the suspect coherence of perception, 
with moments lit by their own moons. I've been listening to the ineffable syst systolic beat, marking time like a clock. I've been wondering how the heart of what's human warps and unravels, yet stays a glorious thing. I've been thinking about the extraordinary ordinary, the known unknowns. I've been thinking about death lately and how it's not only birthdays that pass each year. Mm, the extraordinary, ordinary, the known, unknown. That's a, a funny kind of song with its repetition. I mean, not funny, kind of. Mm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful tribute. And the, and the idea of wide rather than long. It's that shift of perception yeah. that we need constantly or else we'll be, the rug will be pulled out and we'll be flat on our backs and gone. So that's what you're doing, I yeah. believe, in these poems, is yeah. paying attention to that which is happening anyway, but people don't want to think about it or yeah. talk about it. Yeah, I'm obsessed. Yep. <laughs> so this is called Baptism in Time. Okay. A Baptism in Time. In ether chill, hands hold a heart, its shivering home, the operating theater. Metal filigrees through the broken places, Upward and deep, it stirs and lulls. Bits of memory inherit the moment. In slow time, shut doors left ajar. Nevermore's hard birth begets days unlike others. Beneath our breastbones, a sadness of ash. Mm, mm. Have you, um, I mean, it's, th there's that surgical image have you experienced that directly, or you know what it feels like? Well, it was my dad. Ah. Oh, my dad. Okay. Yeah. I love the way that your parents are, like, riding on your shoulders. Yeah. I was crazy for them. I know that's well, seldom that you hear that from a child, know. but I was. It's glorious. And are, yeah. aren't they lucky, even though they aren't here anymore, yeah. to have had that? And you as well. I feel lucky. Okay. So this one is called The Daily News. Reading the obituaries, the world goes on. At a far center, a universe dies. A compression of lifetimes into words. Sometimes a photo of someone smiling. Mm. The fascinating thing about your poems is that they um, are both abstract and personal in the same breath. I don't know how you do it, <laughs> but... Um, you know, there they, there you have the whole experience compressed, and I like it very much. Okay, so this is my latest poem that I wrote, and uh, it's called Dad's 99th Birthday. Mm. Uh, he would have been 99 ah, in August. Okay. Dad's 99th Birthday. It's your birthday. I leave the windows open. Watch the sunflowers turn to the sun. Light a candle to guide your way. I remember the year that time slithered away, the day unlike others tangling into a hard knot. It's sun-drenched summer again with its sharp cornered sky. Terrestrial business folds in on itself. I light this candle to guide my way. Mm. And that terrestrial business is, is always there, but we don't have to get stuck in it. Yeah. This one's called Dottie, and it was written uh, for a woman who was like a second mother to me. She was my California mother. Okay. You probably heard that it's a New York accent. Oh, yeah, I <laughs> love it. I feel so at home. So when I moved here uh, 40 years ago, this was, this was my mother here. Yes. Dottie. Little brittle bird bones, wearing no one's clothes, sitting in no one's chair, feeding on air and light. A heart beats because it does not know how to stop. A mouth opens for a long ago mother. The dream is almost over. Blue veins map a topography of distant neighborhoods and a faraway nowhere. Time repeats itself. Time repeats itself. Time repeats itself as if it mattered. Yes. Is she indeed? Uh, is she alive or dead? Don't no, she was passing at that time. Right. I mean, I, yeah. I could hear it yeah. in the poem. Yeah. And I love that kind of baby bird imagery. Yeah. And that's, she was, yeah, that is what was there. Right, right. And yeah. the veins, which are also part of, you mm -hmm. know, a chick that hasn't maybe 
even fledged. Yeah, and she was yeah. in this hospital room wearing, you know, your standard uh, hospital yeah. gown. And, uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So I, I was told as a rumor that all poets have a dog poem. Well, <laughs> let us say that you have a dog poem. I want a dog poem, please. So this one's called Milk Bone for Jakey. Uh -huh. Only crumbs in my pocket, we walk slowly. Smells no longer interest you, your world reduced to me. I am your religion. I will betray you. We walk the edge together. We will both fall far. Wow. We are gods to our animals. And that's recognizing the power of it. And when a dog's sense of smell goes, you know it's all gone. Yeah, it's close. Yeah. yeah. So the other thing I tend to do is I write about writing a lot. Okay. So this one's called On the Block. And it actually is referring to writer's block. On the Block. In a dim light meander, a writer's concern for precision, compression, lyrical sound, and one simple elemental truth goes down a very bad path. Through the double lens of imagination and memory, a flawed and flimsy lowercase moment will be mugged. Twisted turns of interpretation coerce a deeper registry of inquiry, concluding with a neat ending, and oh, could it be indelibility. Pending yet another bone mo from an empty poet, the dim light of the computer cursor blinks on and on, ready to surrender all its belongings well, that's to a, a merciful delete. <laughs> okay. Oops. I, sorry, I that's broke okay. it. But what you did was you wrestled, wrestled it to the ground <laughs> and squeezed it and got a poem out of it, which is an amazing transformation. <laughs> so we have about nine-ish minutes. Don't worry about the time. Okay. I'll, I'll keep you on track. I just, but just know, know how much time we have. Thank you. So I'm still working with my poetry writings. This one is called Revision. And um, I have had a tendency to revise a poem to non-existence. So, Revision. A spark from the ash heap, bright and hot, ignites the poem again and again. Hidden in my darkest deep, written in sand, the poem pearls around a piece of grit. Tinkered at the core, Circumspect and stunted, the poem returns page white. <laughs> um, you, do you have a practice of writing every day, or you just write? No, how does no, it work? I, I don't. I, I've tried to do that, and it's. It. I just write really bad poetry. Okay. So I have waited till something is mm -hmm. triggered or sparked, or yes. And then, and then I'll struggle with it. Yes. And but it can you know, take days. Right, but what's <laughs> fascinating is when it finally comes out, I don't feel the struggle. I feel what emerged. So, you know, we, let's keep going. OK, so um, this one is called In Case You Plan to Write a Poem. And uh, it's a little bit of a list poem. So, in case you plan to write a poem, activate the fluency of perception. Excavate memories of ancient wounds. Fixate on your own interests delicately calibrate a lack of artifice. Shake off narrative vigorously. Curdle pathologies into bone mows. Come perilously close to nonsense. Snip the stitches of a warm glow. Tinker with stubborn question marks. Ignore evidence of difficult terrain. Extol the virtues of enticement. Barrel down pointless roads. And if that doesn't suffice, reference a moonless night on a still warm autumn eve. Mm, I love all those verbs <laughs> that tell you how to do it. Do you teach as well? No, I don't. Okay. I don't. So this is my testimony. All right. I have to put my hand up. Okay. <laughs> testimony. I was told Gibbons experience irony. Rats laugh when tickled. Reality and its representations are in more than just miles. I think speech swells around memory. Time is always the lead character. In different cosmos demand the solitude of existence. I believe a Talmudic study of the office safety manual 
will ensure immortality. Dressing for the job you want will camouflage a tattered core. And the employment of small and grand larcenies are at full capacity. I know the last five of the Ten Commandments are negotiable. The cradle of the natural world is in danger of tipping over. Levitation during meditation is caused by the exhaustion of gravity. I suppose good news is possible in this one for certain life. Perception will always shimmy between wonder and reason. And unassailable magic is a foot in a recognizable world. I really wish for a pilot light in the soul's opaque depth, that Harry Houdini will return with a steady stream of telling details, and that the choppy waters of age are more than a countdown to nothingness. Mm, that really says it all. <laughs> you put it out there, and uh, I, 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 I see it and I agree fully. Thank you. So um, I collect crazy animal facts. I don't know why I do this, but it's, mm -hmm. I have lists of them. So you'll hear a few more in okay. this one. This one's called, And Yet. Bonobos use symbols to communicate. Border collies know 1,000 words. Dolphins have a rudimentary number sense. Crows make sophisticated tools. Elephants recognize themselves in mirrors. Reptiles have their insanely good looks. Resembling a bloated kielbasa with dentures, the naked mole rat runs forward and backwards at the same pace. If their mate is unattractive, the zebra finch, unwilling to propagate, lays smaller, unsurvivable eggs. The bowerbird enjoys decorating with flowers and bright colors. No plaid is involved. And for human phenomenon, your unsayable absence reduced to a bald plot plums the futility of grief. Mm. What? So you had fun and then you dove. <laughs> and that's a, that's a, that's a great, uh, t again, another tour de force. Um, this is one's called, another list poem, What the Great Almighty Carries in Her Purse. Mm. So this is what the Great Almighty has in her purse. Address book of dreams for unkempt minds. Keys to the secret laboratory of language tinted glasses of contentment and despair, sewing kit with safety pins for newly created runes, tape measures for the metrics of uselessness, cash and, ca cash and change for the noisy whimsy of commerce, mirror to apply the shadows of incomprehension, arbitrary and deliberate facts made of soft rouge, comb to unknot the fundamentals of solitude, Photo of family at the well-laid table of reminiscence. Tissues for proof of a second, icier world. So what's amazing about that is that go into anybody's bag and <laughs> you find those very things. <laughs> Actually, that poem was written because I stopped because a cat ran out in front of my car. My pocketbook <laughs> went over and there it all was. Yes. And yes. I kept thinking about it. <laughs> okay, so you know about three minutes. You don't have to look. Okay, so, so I, I just want to make sure you get that last one. Here. Okay, so let's do. But these are pretty short poems. Okay, so I'm going to do. I'll do this one. Okay. And then I'll do my last poem. Okay. When. This one's called When. When I die, I will find my cell phone, favorite sunglasses, my wrinkle free face, my sense of humor. When I die, a shoebox of dangerous cliches fleshy and heartfelt, will conjure my earthly side. When I die, the din of expectation will quiet, and a thin rhapsody will sigh a single bright flower. When I die, a fitful flame will evaporate the gauzy mists of light and heavy words, the precise geometry of detail. When I die, my old dog will bark, then sing to the moon of birth and death, and the everything in between. Mm, is that old dog Jake? Yeah. The very same. Yeah. That's lovely. This one's a little short one. This one's from my first chapbook. It's called Borderlands. Late into the night, a slow moon transits, reflects upon itself. 
Borderlands slip by, become slowly older. Tomorrow's unknowable day makes something bloom. Mm. And the borderlands are where you live. You're always straddling yeah. there. Yeah. So um, I thought I would end with advice. All right. <laughs> yes. And this is called Advice from Mother on Your One Less Day. Advice from Mother on Your One Less Day. Skip obligations, inescapable sins. Wiggle out of pigeonholes. Enjoy happenstance and flux. Don't forget to floss. Clog the clunky machinery of belief. Refuse templates of self. Ignore persistent memory. Elbows off the table. Airbrush your self-portrait. Invite farcical pratfalls. Avoid hard labor's invitation to bruise. Shoulders back, stand up straight. One day, a chill seeps into bones. Clouds will scud at dusk. Adventures of a single consciousness turn to particle and ash. Until then, navigate by lightless stars, handwrite thank you notes, RSVP, yes to everything. And you brought us in right on time <laughs> with things we can take home and do. And what it's all about is no shoulds. So it's been an absolute joy, Les Bernstein. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Okay. What an honor. Yes.